we've taken the challenges brought on by COVID and actually turned them into opportunities. And so, you know, what we present now is just a reflection of what we've always wanted to do, you know, and what we really care a lot about within our own communities. <laughs> Welcome to Arts Engines. I'm your host, Aaron Dworkin. And with us as today's guest is C. Lorenzo Evans III, who serves as the Chief Operating Officer as well as Director of Finance for Washington Performing Arts. Lorenzo, welcome to the show. Indeed. Thank you so much, Aaron. I appreciate the, uh, the warm welcome and I'm, I'm excited to be here. Awesome, awesome. Well, it's so exciting, uh, you know, to have not only, uh, you know, an, ex an amazing, you know, administrator and administrative leader, um, but also, of course, an incredible artist and dancer, Thank choreographer, you. and all that. So it's wonderful to have you on the show. Thank um, you for that. And I'm also excited because this show is co curated by. Washington Performing Arts. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to make sure, and we have always have such limited time, so I kind of wanted cool. to delve right into it. Washington Performing Arts brings, you know, amazing artists, does extraordinary things in the community. Um, but one thing that really stands out is Mars Arts DC. And I was just wondering if you could kind of share with our audience, you know, what is that actually? <laughs> Sure, sure. So Mars Arts DC is a is a partnership with Washington Performing Arts and Jacqueline Badger Mars and the Corporation Mars. And so it's a, it's our signature community engagement program. So we really leverage that partnership to really show the breadth of artists that are in DC and, you know, really highlight local artists and their performative talent. Um, and we use that for our gospel choirs as well. And many of our other programs are related to Mars specifically, but uh, we really use that to to you know, show the power of the arts in the DC area through the local community and through our uh, community engagement activities. So Ed, can we delve into that a little bit more? So one obviously is, is having a strong connection with a partner who can really help you know, the work happen and all of that. And it sounds like that is the case with, with Mars. Um, and which is of course such an iconic brand. Of course, um, yes. <laughs> But uh, so that partnership, I understand, and is really important. Um, but then also, um, you know, I think there's a lot of institutions that may look at their local community and go, we obviously want to connect better, but how do we actually do that? You know, we present great art. We are amazing. Our main stages are extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our local community is okay, right? But how do we, how can we just get more of them in our doors to see our main things on our main stage, right? Can sure, you kind sure. of share, how are you thinking about that? And how are you thinking, how do you actually practically engage with your local community? How are you making it happen? How do you view your own role versus their role in art making? Those types of things. Sure, most definitely. Well, I am a local artist from DC. And so, you know, I have a perspective as someone who built a career in dance for over 20 years, having been from DC. I have the, uh, we have the perception of having artists as audience because I'm now an audience member now that I'm retired, right? And so that doesn't change the fact that I've been an artist for years. And so as part of this, we really want to engage artists as audiences and engage them authentically. So, you know, that means we have to go to their shows and, and you know, really curate some of the best talent from around the area. So we're, out, we're busy out in the community actually going to events and, you know, learning about the local artists community um, and engaging those artists as we have chance, chances and opportunities to present them. And so that's really how we engage. It's authentic, you know, it's like a one-to-one -one relationship where we actually know our artists community because we're a part of it. And so, you know, like you said, it's really, you know, a lot of larger organizations have that philosophy that, you know, we're presenting on the main stage and our arts, our local arts community is over there, you know, but our arts community is part of our local, you know, the ethos of our company is a local focus, basically. That is just so extraordinary here. And I think is really kind of leads to this pathway, which is kind of not just this, oh, here's what we do. How can we kind of get you to come in and get what we do, but rather Indeed. we're part of 
our community and we want to work on something with you rather than have you join something we're already doing and we want you to inform us and it sounds like almost washington performing arts is is as informed by your various partners and audiences with Mars Arts DC as they are informed by you. Indeed, indeed. And we, you know, Mars is the anchoring partnership, but we also partner with many local organizations as well as artists to really bring that, to bring the art forward. And so Mars Arts DC virtual specifically is really about that partnership with local businesses and with local artists, because we realize that because of the pandemic, we aren't able to present in person and so we really want to enforce the the intersection of the arts and the local economy by partnering with uh you know partnering with local businesses to do that so you raise a really important point and right so obviously unfortunately we're still you know caught up in in the midst of this pandemic um, and I know there's a number of institutions where a lot of their community engagement programs, they felt once the pandemic hit, they couldn't do things in person. And often some of those programs were the first to either get cut back or suffer because not obvious at any will, but just institutions felt we have trouble reaching. What have you been doing that works? And moving forward past the pandemic, are there things that you've learned from this that you think you might do differently permanently moving forward. Sure, sure. So we've adapted almost all of our um, education and community engagement programs to the virtual format. And so our gospel choirs had, did a beautiful video uh, early on in the coronavirus uh, crisis. And it's really just an inspiring opportunity to bring people together in a different way. I mean, we've, we've done um, some presentations of some instruction online uh, through our Mars Arts DC program and through our education programs, and also just uh, found different ways to present art in the virtual space. And so I think like some organizations, as you said, have stepped away from their local community things, but we've actually doubled down on them and really adapted what we have done to the virtual format. And so um, what we've learned is that people want to do things, they want to be engaged. And it's like, you know, they haven't seen the coronavirus as, uh, you know, as the art stopping, they actually want to engage even more. And so I think we are in the right place at the right time because we've adapted our programs to meet their needs in many ways and also learned from the artists who we've been working with as part of this. Awesome. So you know, one other thing that I wanted to kind of ask, you know, sometimes people have, have asked me and many of our viewers work in, in large institutions and they sometimes feel like, well, here's something I want to do or I wish our institution was doing, but I can't, you know, I can't seem to make it happen or I can't make it happen. Um, you're part of a vibrant institution and, and it seems like you're able to really bring about a lot of change, bring about a lot of impact from your role. Could you just share kind of how have you found that you've been able to do that? Is there either something that you're doing specifically that's helping to bring impact or is there something about the nature of Washington Performing Arts that provides the, the, you know, the palette for you to be able to do that work? Just wondering what other institutions, what can we learn from how you're operating that enables you know, an individual within an institution to really bring about substantive change? Sure, sure. So as a person who has been a dancer for so long and, and working in an arts organization, I've always wanted the opportunity to present dance. And so, you know, as this is really where I can put my thumbprint on Washington Performing Arts by bringing such a robust dance performance as far as our Mars, Art, Mars Arts DC, Dance in DC program that's forthcoming. And so um, we, we selected amazing dancers of all disciplines to partner with local businesses to not only only tell the story of the artist but the, to tell the story of the business and all of the performances coalesce or all of the uh, the short films will coalesce in a beautiful performance within each one of the business spaces and so you know that's something that I can bring my full self to and so I just think that as arts organizations are planning and that as curators are planning bring your full self to these virtual opportunities because you know I think that 
um, we've taken the challenges brought on by COVID and actually turned them into opportunities. And so, you know, what we present now is just a reflection of what we've always wanted to do, you know, and what we really care a lot about within our own community. So as someone who was a dancer for many years, being able to curate dance now is, is definitely how I've done something that I've always wanted to do. Um, and then seeing the gospel choirs come together at this time is also very, very inspiring. I mean, I, um, you know, I, I tell the story often that my mother would never let me participate in Children of the Gospel when I was young. And so it's funny now that I'm such a, a, a huge part of the organization, I can participate as much as I want now, you know. So, you know, I'm like, Mom, you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm working with these people and being part of it now as an adult. But uh, yeah, Children of the Gospel, you know, we, we've really adapted a lot of those programs to the virtual space. And, you know, we're just doing a lot of things that we have always wanted to do and um, seeing the challenges brought on by COVID as the opportunity to do those. Awesome, awesome. I love especially that sense of opportunity. So, you know, I always like to ask for all of my guests, you know, all of these things and the work that you're doing obviously brings about daily challenges and you have to balance that with, with personal life and with all of these things. And just wondering, when times get tough for you, are there sources of inspiration or something that you do that helps to fuel you, that helps you to get past those obstacles and, and beyond those tougher days? Sure, sure, definitely. I'm a cyclist, so I love to cycle. Um, and so now that it's getting cold here in Washington, it's, it's like I get to cycle a lot less now because, you know, it's, it's pretty cold out there right now. So uh, my cycling season is coming to a close, but I love listening to. And do you bring it, do you bring it indoors? Do you bring the cycling indoors to spin? It's not as spin, fun. I, guess, or? I do, but it's not as fun, you know, it's not as fun. So I'll pull up like a video from someone cycling in Italy or France or something like that and cycle from my living room, but it's not the same as being out in the in the elements right right but um but where i find um where i find inspiration artistically is through very complex arrangements of music for some reason i just love like stephen sondheim's arrangements and i also like very complex um, dance choreography and somehow i I look at that and say, you know, of all the complexity that this is is presenting right now, the you know the person who created it had a vision, and so I always say that if I'm a person with a vision, I can get through, I can navigate anything to create what I want to create, and so that's really, you know, I take inspiration from very complex sort of art forms, um, you know, because I, I think that that just it embodies the, uh, you know, the complication to me. I just if, I know that there's always a way through it and there's always a way to come out of it, so. <laughs> wow, awesome, awesome. So unfortunately, we're just about out of time, but as you look forward, post-pandemic, post-quarantine, all of this, is there a key goal that you have out there, you know, within the next year or so that you're like, you know, this is something I'm really looking forward to that we're gonna be able to do? Um, I want to take what we've learned from the uh, the COVID crisis and, you know, the, 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 the things that we have done well and the things that we learned from and really just create some nimble artistic works from that. So like partnering, continuing to partner with the people that we've met in this process and really taking some of the modeling that we've done with some of the beta testing of our virtual programs and just taking that to the next level and engaging much larger audiences and, and partners and contributors. And so that's really something I want to take forward through all of this. Awesome. See Lorenzo <laughs> Evans the third. you truly are one of the great arts engines who is powering human creativity in our field. Thank, Thank you that. so much for joining us on the show. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thank you.